Welcome to another tutorial. Uh, it's been a little while, I know, but uh, I had an idea here for something I wanted to share uh, based on some discussion on Facebook uh, with some friends and colleagues. So uh, if you've done any streaming over the last year or so, you've most likely uh, had to use a USB webcam of some sort or another. And uh, you may have reached a point where you want to mix uh, various cameras to do different things. And there's a lot of software solutions on how to do this. Uh, you can do it right in OBS to some extent as well, uh, or vMix or whatever broadcasting software you're using. Um, but sometimes you want a separate device to do that mixing. And there really isn't a separate hardware device out there that takes in USB cameras um, and does a lot of what we need it to do. And... Um, what I was doing as a solution was I was using Touch Designer and built a component in there. And of course that's software. And uh, what I was thinking though is if you were lucky enough to have a separate computer to run uh, a Touch Designer session on, you could actually create your own USB camera switcher. Um, and I'll say controller rather than switcher because you could do a whole lot more than switching. Uh, so I just wanted to demonstrate that here. It's really a very simple technique. Uh, it's just that some people may not have thought about it in this context. So um, we're going to go into this uh, component here. And we're going to look. I have um, FaceTime camera, which is my built-in camera, of course. And then I've got three USB cameras here. Uh, this is a Vixture SC35. These are both X SC30s. And um, they're all plugged into a USB hub next to my computer here. And then I've also loaded a couple um, just video clips to show that we could use those as well. So these are going to go into this component and basically just passing through these inputs to a switch. And uh, this switch is set to blend the inputs as things change. So when we go from one thing to another, there will be a blend there. And what I've done is I've set this up to control it with a uh, MIDI controller. And uh, if we go into this component here, uh, we'll see where we're getting that MIDI control. So if we look at this switch, we can see it's looking for this control 17. And if we go back here, we can see it's going back through here. And this is where it's starting. Uh, this is where I have a MIDI in set up with a nano control, Korg Nano Control 2. And um, I've only got the first two knobs mapped here. So I've got the knob 1, uh, which is 0 to 127 MIDI, but then being rearranged to 0 to 5 since I have six inputs. And then the second knob here is for a fade effect, and that takes the 0 to 127, remaps that to 0 to 1, and uh, that gives me a fade in. So that's why I wanted to, to be specific that this is control, not just switching. So uh, you can just as easily build effects and stuff in there with that. So if we come back out of here, we can then take a look at maybe in, in practice, what you could do is you could have, again, this running on a separate machine. All your cameras are plugged in, uh, probably through a hub. And... Um, I can preview what I want to see right here. And I can say, OK, I want to go to the hedgehog. I'm going to fade him in. And then I'm going to go to my above view, my camera above my rig here. And I'm going to fade that out. And I'm going to go to my another one here to the gadget table. And I'm going to fade that in. So you get the idea. You can have a preview set up so that you can see everything that you need to see and control everything with performances this year. Um, I had actually set this up with a timer and I had the cameras switching every like five seconds or 10 seconds or something just to add variety um, in the performance. They weren't necessarily uh, timed to any piece of the music, although you can do that as well. Uh, you could have this time to a kick drum and um, if you're doing, if you already know the material you're going to do um, and it's kind of scripted out, that's a lot easier. If it's improvised material like I do a lot of times that you ex expect it to. 
So, uh, so yeah, this was very effective for me, although I don't have a separate laptop to create this magical device out of. So um, I had to run Touch Designer with my video switching as well as all my effects and stuff on the same machine as my audio, um, as this, the same machine as my broadcasting. <laughs> so uh, this thing becomes kind of an airplane after a while. The fans come on and you know I have to turn another cooling uh, device on just to make sure everything's good. So I'm not saying that everybody should try that. I mean, it's worth trying if you have the tools to try it and see how your performance goes. Uh, but if you do have another laptop laying around, uh, you can make it a dedicated video controller and uh, then, of course, take that, uh, that video signal into uh, maybe a master device that's going to do your broadcast for you. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, if you have any questions, uh, shoot me a note in the comments, and um, I will also uh, be available at my website, jeremydeprisco.net. And uh, if you like this video and it helped you out, you can find me on buymeacoffee.com. Uh, there's some other videos I have on my channel that are focused on stuff like this. Uh, I often like to take somewhat obscure problems and show how I've solved them. And uh, a lot of times the stuff that I'm doing, you know, there might only be a handful of people out there that are really interested in it. But um, I've found that I've gotten some really good feedback on some of even the most obscure things I've posted. So, <laughs> uh, so that's a lot of fun, and it's cool to see that. So... Um, that's all for today. Uh, stay safe. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you later.